The UN's Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has called for a tax on the profits of fossil fuel companies to help pay for the fight against climate change. He said time may be running out to control rising global temperatures. This comes as a new report indicates last month was the hottest May on record and the 12th straight monthly record high. Last month was the hottest May on record. After a year of higher than normal weather, the world is feeling the impact. India is in drought, with voters this week casting ballots in 47 degrees Celsius temperatures. Greece saw its worst wildfire season, with more than 20 recorded fatalities. And there have been more than 60 deaths amid a heat wave in Mexico as water resources dwindle. Outdoor workers are struggling to beat the heat. It's really hard in the heat. Sometimes we run out of water, so people help us out and give us some. It's really hard sometimes with the heat. A new report from the UN estimates that temperatures could keep rising with worsening effect. We are playing Russian roulette with our planet. And we need an exit ramp off the highway to climate hell. And the truth is we have control of the wheel. The 1.5 degree limit is still just about possible. Limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius is a goal established under the Paris Agreement. With it, countries committed to keeping long-term median global temperatures below pre-industrial levels. The UN Weather Agency believes this bout of heat is human-induced and could become more frequent. There's an 80 percent likelihood that the annual average global temperature will temporarily exceed 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels for at least one of the next five calendar years. The agency is calling on the group of 20 to reel in the fossil fuel industry and limit carbon output. The G20 is holding a summit in Brazil next month where they are set to discuss the environment and an energy transition. Zeke Hausfather is a climate scientist at the nonprofit Berkeley Earth, and he joins us now from Oakland in California. Welcome to DW. Now, the World Meteorological Organization Thanks now says you. there is an 80% chance that we'll hit the 1.5 degrees threshold from the Paris Agreement within the next five years. What's your reaction to that assessment? So what they're saying is that there's an 80% chance that one of the years in the next five years will be above 1.5 degrees. That doesn't necessarily mean the world has passed the UN temperature target, um, which is in reference to a longer term average. So when we think about climate change, there's human induced warming, but there's also some year to year variability. And most of that is driven by El Nino and La Nina events that cause some additional warming or cooling respectively. Right now we're in the midst of a big El Nino event. And so global temperatures are actually approaching 1.5 degrees. In fact, the last 12 months as uh, Copernicus reported have been about 1.6 degrees above pre-industrial levels. But that's going to fade a little bit as a La Nina event develops. And so our best estimate remains that the world is going to firmly pass 1.5 degrees in the late 2020s or early 2030s if we don't reduce emissions quickly. So are you saying that we are still on track for that? Currently, the world is on track to pass 1.5 degrees in the next 10 years. Um, and to not be on track to do that, we'd have to make some pretty radical changes in terms of reducing global emissions very quickly. Uh, we also have the potential to pass 1.5 degrees temporarily and bring temperatures back down later in the century, which is what most IPCC models do these days, if we remove more carbon from the atmosphere than we're adding after net zero. But that's a big lift. It's a lot easier not to pass it in the first place than to try to recover from it. Now, we've heard Antonio Guterres today saying uh, he's calling for a windfall tax on fossil fuel companies. Can the fossil fuel industry fix the problem that they created? So I don't think they have the incentive to fix the problem they created. And in fact, as long as fossil fuel companies can make money selling fossil fuels, they're going to do so. The only way to stop the world from warming is to get our global emissions of CO2 all the way down to zero, which means no more burning of oil, gas or coal unless that's counterbalanced with permanent removal of carbon from the atmosphere, which is quite expensive. Now, maybe there's a way that oil and gas companies can play a role in some of the solutions and things like geothermal energy uh, in carbon capture and storage or carbon dioxide removal, but that's gonna be a very different market than they're in today. 
Um, there's not really a world where oil and gas companies are still selling oil and gas 30, 40 years from now if we're on track to meet our climate goals. Now, we've also heard news today of this May being the hottest May ever and marking the 12th straight monthly record high. You've mentioned uh, things like El Nino, and, but is, is warming accelerating? So there's a big debate in the community right now about whether or not the rate of warming is accelerating. My personal view is that there's increasing evidence that it is, uh, in part because that's also what our climate models expect to happen in a world where we're not reducing emissions of CO2 and other greenhouse gases, but we are reducing emissions of planet cooling aerosols. So some of the things that we put up in the atmosphere as a byproduct of burning coal, oil, and gas, like sulfur dioxide, actually have a cooling effect on the planet. And those have historically masked about a third of the warming that the world would have otherwise experienced. We've been cleaning the air up really quickly in places like the US and Europe. There's a recent regulation to clean up the uh, sulfur emissions from ships. And all of this is contributing to a pretty stark decline in emissions of sulfur dioxide, which is a planet cooling effect. And so that's really supercharging this underlying warming trend from CO2. And so because of that, there's increasing evidence that the rate of warming has increased in recent decades. Uh, and there's a paper today, just out today that suggested that the world is now warming at a rate of about uh, not 0.26 C per decade, uh, which is about 50% faster than the rate we've seen on average since 1970. Thank you for those insights. Uh, Zeke Hausfather with Berkeley Earth. Thank you.